Okay, so Darwin must be laying eggs, like, right at this moment. Here she is. Let's see. She's under this leaf, and she's just completely in the ground. Like, she's just <laughs> completely underneath the ground. So she must be currently laying eggs, and they must be way down there. So what I'm, what's going to happen is once I see that she's out, I'm going to go digging in that corner. And when I find them, I'm going to put them down into this tank because this is for the babies. And it's for those babies. So then the eggs can incubate in here and there's a nice drainage layer and everything. And it's good. So, and there's not a ton of isopods in here. I'm pretty sure there's none. I think it's mostly springtails, which is the ideal, I believe. So if I can get them down in here, they should be able to incubate and do just fine. And that's more proven to me anyway, than incubating them myself. So I'm just gonna let them do their thing in the ground and I think that'll be all right. Okay, so from a lot of work throughout last night, it seems that Darwin has finally laid her eggs and I have to look for them. So they're throughout back there, but the main thing here is to figure out what does she weigh now? So what is the difference between Darwin having eggs and Darwin not having eggs look like. So as you can see, she is real skinny. So I know that she's a she's laid at least one, but from the amount of time she took, I'm assuming she laid both of them at the same time. Okay, that's 187. <sighs> wow. Okay, so that's 0.13 ounces down. So it'll be interesting to see how much she recovers from that. So I'm going to write that down real quick. Correction, that is actually 0.27 ounces down, which is crazy because that's more than the baby's way, <laughs> like easily. So she definitely laid two eggs. I'm going to put her back now because she's probably done and she's tired. And we're going to get these eggs out. And I'm going to incubate them in this terrarium right here because... The terrarium that Darwin's in is overrun, absolutely overrun, with isopods, and they will try to eat the eggs. So now, let's see if I can dig these things out. Let's see if you guys will be able to see. Okay, so the nice thing is this plant is not actually right here, so I can just move it over. So she was over in this corner for a long time. So here, I'm, I'm going to first dig down right here because she was positioned down here for a while and I'm glad I just added in a bunch of new soil for her to dig in and stuff so let's see just real gently digging down and she was like really down in here so I'm trying not to block the light but it's really hard to see let's see Huh. Oh, there something is. Ha ha. Okay. See down there, right there? I believe that is an egg. So here, I'll try to position you guys. <laughs> you guys are kind of hanging for a second. So you don't want to rotate it. So I'm wondering if she laid one egg in one corner and another egg in the other. Oh, yeah. Definitely an egg right there. Oh, shoot. I just touched something else. Okay. Is that another? No. Okay, this is real good in there. She did a good job, for sure. Which is crazy that she'll lay them this far down. Well, I guess she didn't bury it this far down. This is just, she didn't bury it all the way. Shoot, I just covered it up. Honestly, this is pretty difficult. I don't want to hurt it. So she recently bred with, uh, well, I think I recently had her in with Linus. So I'm assuming they bred. Okay, I don't want to rotate it. Okay, so you can see it real well. But it's this is like the hardest thing <laughs> to get out. I'm going to really press over this way. So the goal is, because there's so many isopods in here. Oh. And there's the other egg right there. It's, it's even farther down. That's crazy here. You can see it. 
right there. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get these guys, and this will help me a whole lot. It's all right, Darwin. There we go. And look at that. It's a big old egg. Look at that. So we're going to take that. We're going to be sure not to rotate it. And then I'm going to have to dig a little area for it in this new tank. So this new tank's going to have baby crushed geckos in it, but they're not in there yet. Do not want to rotate it. There we go. They're not in it yet. And when these hatch, they will be in it. But that'll be all right because let's see if I can kind of just gently lift it out. Man, those are chunky. I feel like these are real big eggs. <laughs> eggs, eggs. Haha. -ha. So now this area doesn't have any isopods, but it does have springtails. So these guys won't mold. And then. We should be all good to so just plop them in here and they'll incubate just like the babies incubated in here and everybody will be all good. So I'm going to dig over here and we're going to dig down, remove some stuff, remove some leaf litter and whatnot. And then I'm just going to go ahead and bury them right down here. And I could put them in the little incubator because I have two other eggs incubating. But I trust this method more because, in a way, it's less stress for me. I kind of like to be, you know, like in the, uh, what is it? What is that saying? The, the less you know, the happier you are. It's not the saying, but that's what it means. Um, ignorance is bliss type of deal. So if I don't know what's going on, I can't worry about it. Or I would, you know, out of sight, out of mind. All the all the things I'm saying here. So I'm going to grab this. And just set it right down here. Oh, no. Okay, so I've heard from some that if you rotate them a little bit, it's not too much of an issue. But I'm going to kind of try to put it right back the way it was. So like down in there. It's kind of like that. And then this one... I just fell over a little bit. We're going to put it right down here as well. So not too deep. Not as deep as she put them. But this substrate, this substrate is nice and moist. And we're just going to lay that substrate over them. And this is just as far down as the ones that Teddy recently laid as well. Or not recently, actually last month. So those are incubating in her enclosure, and I trust that to happen because, like I said, the baby's incubated in her enclosure. So I'm just going to put these leaves down, and then, you know, in uh, probably, I'm guessing around 80 days, maybe 80 to 100 days, little baby crushed geckos will emerge from here, and they shouldn't have any issues. So it'll be interesting because this vivarium will be quite old by then, but I just recently set it up. So that is just uber exciting. And yeah, that's really great. And the goal is to eventually get her into a closure that isn't completely filled with isopods. And then whenever they lay eggs, I probably won't even worry about it. Or if this ends up working really successfully and I get babies from this, and then, you know, I get babies from the other method and I get babies from this, I'm getting lots of babies from what I'm doing then I will probably just stick with this meth meth method of having a terrarium to incubate eggs in, because I think that would be pretty cool. But let's real quick, you can see the babies. These are not Darwin's babies, but I'm really excited to have babies from Darwin, if I can manage to make that happen. So these are Teddy babies, and there's one, and there's the other. We're gonna get, I need to spray them down, see if I can get them to kind of come off. There we go. I'm going to get them nice and humid, but it's already nice and humid in here for the eggs, and I think that is awesome. So that's really exciting. I'm glad I got to film it and everything. Uh, I think that's really cool.
So this is super interesting behavior from Darwin. So out of curiosity, I decided to dig where she originally meant to lay them because I didn't know if like crust geckos could sometime have, sometimes have three eggs or whatnot. So I just, cause she sat there forever and then she moved over and laid two. So it's, I just wasn't sure if maybe she had laid three or something. And she came up and she bit me. Darwin has, none of my crushed geckos, in fact, have ever tried to bite me. So I wonder if it was a food response or if they, in fact, have some type of, like, maternal instinct, which are paternal instinct, I believe, which would be really, really interesting. And I feel like I've kind of noticed that before. If I try to dig up her eggs, like, she wants to go back to the site of the eggs and kind of protect them. And even just the fact that she was sitting over them for a while after she had laid them is pretty interesting as well. So I don't know if there's any, like, I don't know if they actually have any paternal instinct, but it would, it, I mean, it, it appears so at least in my little, little bit of experience, experience here. So that's really interesting. Like she just was not real happy with me digging and she's just, you see, she's completely, you know. So I wonder if she's just hungry. She's probably going to want insects for a while to build up back her calcium supply and everything. So I'll be sure to make sure to give her insects with calcium and offer them and everything. So that is really exciting. I'm really excited to have hopefully more geckos soon or, you know, in a couple months. That'll be really cool. Holy crap. Wait a second. Okay. This isn't that amazing, but this is pretty cool, I think. What is what is Teddy doing down at the substrate level? <gasps> ah! Shit, did you, can you see that? <laughs> oh my goodness! She's laying eggs. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I knew it. I weighed them both and I was like, these two, man, they're about to lay eggs because they'd both gotten back up to weight. So it's so cool that I, this is why you weigh your animals, people. So now I know what her weight is after she's laid eggs. I know what her weight is after she's laid eggs. And I know what their weight's normally supposed to be because I weigh them every month. And that's amazing. <laughs> but... So the last time they laid eggs, they were about seven days apart, I believe. That might be incorrect. I don't know. It was pretty close. I believe it was about a week. They laid them a week apart. So we have Teddy's eggs that should be in the front there that will hatch. They're supposed to hatch around after, sometime after Christmas. But like a week before that, Darwin laid eggs. And those are over here. And you might notice that there is... A bearded dragon right there. It's because it's it's doing something. Anyway, uh, they're in this tub and they have vermiculite and they seem fine. I don't know. I feel like they have too little humidity, but I really have no idea what I'm doing there. But they haven't like rotted or anything, and they don't, you know, they don't seem like they're going bad. So maybe they'll hatch. I don't know. But they would hatch before the ones in this tank. So now these should hatch at the same time. I should get four babies pretty darn close to one another if they are fertile that's the main if here is like if they're fertile because i'm pretty like i know they can incubate in this tank so as long as they're fertile and i'm really hoping i'm really really hoping that those ones over there are fertile from leonard and these ones are fertile from linus and then these are all fertile from linus but i'm not entirely sure so right now i have eight eggs incubating <laughs> across the room and they're all kind of two four of them are incubating in this tank and then two of them on this tank and then you know the other two in that tub but that's wild that's oh man that's so crazy so <laughs> the girls are just maybe they like triggered each other i don't know that's so wild oh man okay so here you can see teddy and you can see both eggs, I believe, right under her. There will now be four 
crushed gecko is supposedly hatching into this tank at some point. So I think around Christmas I should have four crushed geckos hatch from the two that she laid about a month ago and then two that she laid about three weeks ago that are right there and then the other ones are incubating in my makeshift incubator that I don't really know what I'm doing. But if you want to know what crushed gecko eggs look like, extremely white until you try to dig them up and then they mark up a bunch. But that is, you were right, they lay every single month, which it's, they're like lined up too, which is really interesting. Okay, so here you go. Here's Darwin eating a DB roach with some nice calcium supplement with D3. And this will help make sure she doesn't die of, you know, calcium deficiency or anything like that. We want to make sure. And she's being fed the breeding diet. They all are. So there won't be too much issue with the last lack of calcium or anything like that. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know crushed gecko videos don't do the best on my channel, but I really enjoy crushed geckos and I really enjoy like finding stuff out about them and making content about them. So I will continue doing so. So if you happen to like the crushed gecko content, feel free to subscribe because there is much, much more of that coming. And if you happen to like this video, feel free to click the like button. And if you have any comments or concerns about this video, leave it in the comment section and I will reply. Have a fantastic day.